Hello, Scroll Tribe 2.0. What is up, my dudes? So it is hump day. Happy hump day for everybody. I feel like this is the, the first video I've made in forever for over here. Um, that's not a live stream or, or anything like that because it feels like the last couple of weeks, maybe the last couple of months has just been like, go, 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 go and no breathe. And today was the same. I was all over the place today. We have my brother-in-law, sister-in-law and nephew coming into town on Friday. That is less than 48 hours away. That's like 36 hours away at this point. And I had a ton of stuff to do today. The downside is that everybody else and their mom, their cousin, their auntie, the third cousin removed, decided they also needed to do everything under the sun today. So I had to go to Walmart and try not to bang my head against a wall because I was in Walmart and everybody was in Walmart and I, I don't like being surrounded by people. So anyway, that's what happened. So this morning, got up, had my beef tea. For those of you who know, you know, for those of you who don't, I put the beef uh, collagen in my black tea in the morning. So it gives it this weird, like earthy flavor, if you will, but it tastes lovely. I've become very accustomed to this flavor of beef tea. And that's what I call it now. I actually went out last week. We went, I don't remember where we went, where were we? My husband and I, Kevin, y'all know, went somewhere and I ordered tea and I ordered beef tea, literally ordered beef tea. And the girl looked at me like I clearly had lost my ever loving mind. I was like black tea. I meant black tea because she doesn't know that I drink beef tea in the morning. It, we didn't need to have the conversation. I just, it was fine, whatever. So I did that, had my tea this morning, washed some dishes, made some breakfast. Um, side note, I have figured out my favorite breakfast food under the sun right now is a piece of organic sourdough. It's Rudy's, R-U-D-I. I got it at Whole Foods. Their sourdough, a piece of it toasted, obviously, with some smushed up avocado on it and two fried eggs with some salt and pepper. Holy jolly, that thing is freaking amazing. And then like some watermelon on the side for like a really good breakfast. I feel very proud of myself and healthy. I was like, oh, look at me not having mayonnaise today. Woo very small victory, but I need y'all to understand the fact that I have cut mayonnaise out of my life. It's literally like kicking your best friend out and never speaking to them again, because I don't know if you can tell, but I'm, I'm white and I'm Southern and mayonnaise is pretty much in my DNA. So to kick it out has been very difficult. I feel like that's probably how crackheads feel when they like kick the habit is like me getting rid of mayonnaise. It feels the same. Like I'm like, I got a little mayonnaise. Can I just get a little mayonnaise? But I'm very proud of myself and I'm trying very hard to stick to it. So ask me in a week if I've had any mayonnaise so I can tell you yay or nay. And if I say nay, you tell me that I have messed up. I need accountability here, right? So made breakfast for the man, for myself. And then I was like, hey babe, I have this, 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 this to do. This is what you need to do while I'm gone. This is what the kid needs to do while I'm gone. Like I went into straight like dictator role today. Like I told them everything they needed to get done before I got back. I said, you have three hours max. I need the, 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 the whole entire apartment vacuumed. The man took care of that. The kid, I was like, your bathroom needs to be clean. All your clothes need to be washed. Everything needs to be folded and put up. And her room vacuumed, she took care of that. So they did those things while I was gone. While I was gone, it was 90 degrees out and I'm in a Jeep, all right? For those of you who don't know, I have a Jeep. I love it. But the downside to Jeep, and I don't know who in the controls at Jeep decided that they wanted to leave this one little part out or maybe it's just my Jeep that doesn't have it. Now I don't know. Do other Jeeps have it? Hmm. I have air conditioning, which is lovely. Thankful for air conditioning, trust me. And I have power windows and I have leather seats and it's lovely and I have heated seats, which in the winter, oh, best thing ever to warm up your little tuchus when, the, when it's cold outside, right? What I don't have is a way to cool my tuchus in the summer though. And I'm like, if you have the ability to heat my butt, why don't we have the ability to cool my butt? Because I don't know if you understand, I'm 42, Pre-menopause is kicking in, so I'm getting extra hot every day. It's 90 freaking degrees on a good day right now, and I'm in the sun, and I wanna roll my windows down, and I want the top open, because I'm in a Jeep, and in order to do so, I need cool air blowing at my butt on like a constant basis. And I can't have that, because my Jeep doesn't have that. And now I don't know if all Jeeps don't have that, or just mine. Probably should've looked into that first. But anyway, so, I get in the Jeep and I go and there's a lot of traffic, a lot of traffic because tourism <laughs> has kicked in here in Okaloosa County, Florida in the panhandle. Everybody's here, which leads me into what happened on the way home today. Y'all, like it's one of those things where, okay, we're gonna go in order here. So I went to, where'd I go first? Ah, I went to Goodwill to drop some things off because they're the closest, um, donation store. Hello brain. Closest donation store. So I went to go drop some stuff off 
And the Goodwill by me now has a concrete barrier up at the drive-through drop-off thing. And I was like, I mean, it's a Jeep. I could probably climb over this. And but then I was like, no, because you still have to worry about, you know, your axle and all that stuff. So I didn't do it. So I left and I was like, well, that's stupid. Like, did I not have the drive up thing? I'm like, it's hot. I'm not getting out the stuff I have. I can't shove into this little blue donation box. So I was like, I'll think of something else. So then I went to Plato's closet. Let me tell you, I have a 14 and a half year old daughter. If I forget the half, she gets a little, you know, like I'm almost 15 mom. I'm like, I know. Also, she, she wanted to be measured, heighted, whatever. She wanted to know how tall she is. So <laughs> Kevin, he, he put the measuring tape out on the floor. He's like, all right, lay down. She's like, what? He goes, no, that's the only way to get an accurate height. You got to lay down on the floor. And she almost did it. And then he was like, what are you doing? No, don't lay down. So he did her height. She's five foot five and a half. I'm five foot six. She's literally this much shorter than me. So now if we're going to have to argue, I have to stand on my tippy toes so I can look down just a little bit. So we're not like eye to eye because then that takes away the authority. I don't know. Anyway, so that's not the point of any of it. So I went to Plato's closet. Oh, the whole point. The kid, I told her, <laughs> I told her, so if school got out last Friday, it has been not even a whole week. And I said, the only request I have from you for you is that before your aunt and uncle or aunt and uncle, however you want to say that aunt, aunt, whatever, TTLE, that's what we call her. Your TTLE and uncle Ronnie get here. Your closet needs to be clean. They need to be able to put their luggage into your closet on the floor. Right now, the only thing in your closet is shit on the floor. So we need to fix this. She's 14. Now, let me explain to you why I can't get mad at my kid for having the world's dirtiest closet and bedroom. Numerous reasons. Number one, I don't like to clean either. I do it out of necessity. Number two, when I was her age, my room got so dirty, I just moved to a different room. My mom and I had a rental, a three bed, two bath rental. One room was supposed to be a guest room, but when my room got so dirty and I didn't want to clean it, I just started sleeping in the guest room and slowly migrated to the guest room. And my child doesn't have that ability, so she just, you know, whatever. And I know people out there are like, oh my God, why don't you make your child clean? Y'all, I try. I try, but I also want her to understand why she needs to clean. So when she says to me, I don't have anything clean to wear. Sounds like a you problem. You should have brought me your dirty clothes or washed them yourself. But since you can't tell what's clean or dirty, just pick something up and hope you don't smell. You know, that's where we're at. So now she understands that um, she needs to wash her clothes. If she wants clean underwear, clean bra, clean anything, wash her clothes. But she also decided, man, because I, you know, put down the, the wrath of God on her. I'm like, you have to clean the closet. Like it must happen or else everything that you love in your room that you need for this entire summer, like a TV, like your iPad or your phone or any of that stuff, it's all going to go away. We're just going to take it and chuck it. So you can leave your closet and your room dirty or you can put a little elbow grease in and keep all these wonderful things that you have accumulated over the years. So now her closet is perfect. Her room looks absolutely amazing. And she convinced her father today to take her TV that's been sitting on her dresser and put it up on the wall. So now she feels like her room is all brand new. And I said to her, I said, listen, I need you to understand. It is so much easier to keep it clean than it is to clean it after you have let it go to complete shit. And I just realized I sound just like my mother. Holy, see? The older you get, the more you turn into your parents. I realize that little things I do, I'm like, oh, and I'm a mom, oh, and I'm a nana, oh, okay. And th this is another one. It's so much easier if you just keep it clean. Just, that's exactly how she'd say it too. I don't know why you have such a hard time just keeping it clean. So anyway, I told her, I said, it's so much easier to keep it clean than to have to clean it every time you trash it. And, I, and she goes, well, now that I don't have to worry about school, I have like all summer, I'll keep it clean. And I'm like, I feel like it should be the opposite direction. I feel like because you don't have school, you're going to be, you know, messing around in your room all the time. It's going to get dirty on purpose. She's like, no, but now I'll be looking at it. I'd be like, oh, and I'll clean it. I'm like, all right. So then we shook on it. I said, if you can keep <laughs> so if you can keep this room and this closet and your bathroom, because her bathroom is also the guest bathroom. I need y'all to understand. Her bathroom is also the guest bathroom. And anytime somebody comes over and they need to pee, I have to go, kid, <laughs> can they use the bathroom? Do you have random stuff all over the place? And she's like, hold on. And she has to go like tidy up. And I'm like, I'd like there never to have to be a can they and you go, hold on. We need to bypass all that, right? 14 and a half. In just a few years, you're going to want to live on your own. You're not going to have me or your dad telling you to get your ass in gear and, and clean stuff. You're going to have to do it on your own. Or you're going to have a roommate who's going to charge you five times the rent because you're a slob, like whatever. So I told her, I said, here's, here's the deal. 
you're starting ninth grade in the middle of August, right? I said, I'm not buying you shit this summer. We are not buying anything. Don't tell me you want this shirt, that sweatshirt, those pants, those shorts, those shoes, that whatever. I'm not buying nothing, nothing. Not a dollar gonna be spent on anything because we're already trying to get rid of stuff. I said, but, but if you can keep your room clean and your closet clean and your bathroom clean without me having to say, go clean your shit before school starts, I'll give you $200 to get whatever you want for clothes, which we all know does not go very far because everything's so freaking expensive. But I said, you can go with $200, whatever store you want, buy whatever you want. Now, obviously there's stipulations. You're not allowed to walk around like a little hoochie, but that's not her style anyway. She likes baggy stuff. She doesn't want boys to know there's a boobs and a butt and a shape there because 14 and a half could easily pass for 21 with makeup and anything that was form fitting. And it's, it's it, as a mom, it's terrifying. It's a little terrifying. But I told her, I said, but this is, the, this is the thing. If you don't do it and we get to, you know, a week or two before school and you're like, well, can I go school shopping? No, cause you didn't keep up your, your end of the bargain. And uh, I know I've heard, I've actually heard this before. I've heard kids go, well, it's your job as my parent to um, give me the things that I need. My kids never said that, she's not that stupid. And I said, no, 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 no. I need you to understand. Big difference between need and want, you want whatever makeup from sephora you want those pants from h&m you want whatever what you need is a roof a bed and food i give you everything you need so just so we're all fully aware she gets everything she needs you're not gonna get everything you want because you're gonna be a spoiled little shit. but that's not the point either so she knows what the deal is for freshman year if she wants to look all brand new because there's nothing better y'all i remember before freshman year i thought i was like whatever. So before freshman year, when I was in school, I remember being so excited about my first outfit on the first day of school. I'd gotten a haircut and my hair was short, which whatever. And I think I had like bangs or something stupid, but I was so excited about my new outfit because I had my first pair of K-Swiss. I had K-Swiss and I had like the, the Hooters kind of socks, you know, the scrunchy socks. Again, this is in 1996. So I have like Hooter socks and I had light blue, blue jean shorts with a baby blue little three button um, polo shirt. And um, what else? And I had a new Jan Sport backpack and I thought I was the coolest thing. Like when I got my outfit together and I got dressed that first morning, I remember going, oh man, you look good. And then I got to school and I was like, oh, so you're a nerd. Got it, got it, got it. I wasn't aware until freshman year that I was a nerd. And then I learned and I was like, eh. It is what it is. So anyway, back to anything I was talking about earlier. Plato's closet. Oh yeah. So the whole point of clean. Jeez, come on, Michelle. The whole point of her cleaning out her closet was to get rid of stuff that she didn't need, use, want, whatever. And she had a ton of stuff that she has accumulated over the years, as most of us do. And I said, do not make decisions on your own with these things. Do not throw things in the garbage. I need you to put everything you don't want into a massive pile and bring it to me and let me figure this out. Not because, you know, I don't trust her to, you know, not just throw stuff away, but she doesn't know the difference between what I could possibly take to Plato's closet and get a couple dollars back that'll go towards her $200 um, or donate to people who may need something, right? Because we spent the money to start with. If I can recoup just a little, mama would like that. So she brings me a whole bunch of stuff. And by the time it's all said and done, there's a ton of shit to take to Plato's closet. So I take it there and they have it for like two hours. So while they have Plato's Closet stuff, I took like the long way to go to the next um, Goodwill Donation Center because the church-based donation centers, one of them was closed today. The other one had like 17 cars in the line. I was like, I want to so badly, but the, the, the Goodwill right next to it had nobody. And I was like, ah, I'm in such a hurry. So I went to Goodwill anyway, but it took the long way to get there. So I drove down by the water cause you know, I'm at the beach, right? So I drove down by the water and I sent Kevin a text while I'm driving. And I'm like the massive difference in the last seven days, well, technically 14 between before tourism and after tourism is stupid. It would be like the equivalent of if one day I was like, you know, super skinny, whatever. And then I ate like an entire cake. And then the next day I look like Brendan Fraser from the whale, like that kind of difference, like that kind of difference is what the beach was. It, it went from basically barren, nothing there, just this, you know, lovely open stretch of whatever to everybody there with their tents and their chairs and their whatever else. And so many bodies in the water. And then those little banana boats. And then the the uh, jet skis and then that big boat that goes by with the billboard and then you got the parasailers and I was like, man, 
this is crazy. But I realized that when I was younger, that's the vacation I wanted. I couldn't wait to go and be there on that crowded beach. And now that I live at the beach, I'm like, go home. All of you go away and give me back my beach. Uh, right? Anyway, I sound like a child, but it's fine. Um, so I did that and I went to Goodwill and dropped stuff off. And then I went to Publix to pick up um, tequila mixer because brother-in-law, sister-in-law are coming, which is why there's massive things back there. We'll talk about that in a second. So I went to Publix to get tequila mixer, the, these tequila mixers. Then I went to Home Depot to get a stud finder <laughs> to, to find a stud. No, anyway, to get it, that could have made a whole joke, but then it like was too fast. Anyway, so I went to Home Depot to get a stud finder. Uh, so the man could put up the TV for the kid in her room. Cause you know, I had to find the studs in the wall. And then I, I went to where to go? Oh, Plato's Closet, because they called me. So they called me at Plato's Closet, and I, I go to pick up the, the money, right? And I get there, and the girl's like, so we're going to take 22 things. Now, keep in mind, I took her 2,000 things. She goes, we're going to take 22 things, and we'll give you $56. They don't pay very well. Um, Kevin was asking me, like, what the ratio is. And I'm like, I think for pants, you'll get, like, two or three bucks. For a shirt, maybe one or two. A pair of shoes, maybe three or four. It just kind of depends. He goes, well, what do they sell it for? And I'm like, five to 20, depending on what it is. Because it's used stuff, right? So I'm like, it's $56 that I got back from something that I could have just given away. So I'm, I'm fine with it, right? And they give me back my bags of stuff. And I'm like, well, there's a lot of stuff here, but I'm guessing because a lot of it's like wintry, that's why you're not gonna buy it now, right? And the girl was like, yeah, we're only buying summer stuff right now. And I was like, oh, okay. And then another girl, the one who had gone through all my stuff to like price it out and say what they're taking or not, she goes, come back in September. And I was like, what happens in September? She goes, I'll buy some of that stuff from you. And I was like, okay, because there's a Stranger Things sweatshirt. There's a onesie from Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, you know what I'm talking about with the white, in the, it's all black body and the white head. It's a, it's a fleece onesie kind of uh, sleep thing. She's like, you know, beginning of September, we'll start buying for winter, so come back then. And I got home with all the stuff, and I'm like, babe, put it in the, in the garage. We're holding on to it, and in September, I'm taking it right back up to Plato's Closet to get more money. Whatever they don't buy, I'm taking the rest of it to Goodwill to get rid of it, right? Um, so I did that, and then I went to Walmart. Y'all, I don't like Walmart. I don't like Walmart because there's too many freaking people in there, especially a touristy Walmart. And our Walmart is a touristy Walmart. Our Walmart is the one where if you're not paying attention, when you go to cross at the pedestrian crosswalk, you will die because they will run you over because people do not give two shits, which is what we're going to get into in just a second. So um, I go into Walmart, I've got my, my cart and I'm getting the stuff that I need and only the stuff I need. I'm like, I had breakfast and I knew when I got home, I was going to have a protein shake. I've been trying to stick to four meals a day, breakfast, a uh, protein shake, a small snack, and then dinner. Uh, maybe another protein shake with a small snack. It just depends. But I'm trying to stick to my 1800 calories, but mostly um, um, evened out like between protein and carbs and, and some fats, depending on whatever. But I'm trying to stick to it. So I'm, I'm tracking everything on my fitness pal. We're going to the gym and doing all this stuff, right? So I'm at Walmart and I'm like, do not get distracted by little Debbie. Do not get distracted by Doritos. Don't even think about looking at some Dr. Peppers. Like you, you better tunnel vision the shit out of what you're doing, ma'am. And I did. I was very, very proud of myself. Spent $120 still at Walmart because inflation's a bitch. Um, and then by the time I got home, I sent the man a text and I'm like, hey, I need you and the kid to come down here and help me carry this stuff because I can't, whatever. Before I got here, I got a text that my butcher box had delivered, which I, I ordered a ton of chicken. My brother-in-law and sister-in-law like literally only eat chicken, rice, and asparagus. That's all they eat. And I'm like, that's also why they're in shape, so whatever. So I ordered a ton of chicken from butcher box and like ground turkey. So it showed up, right? So I, I park at the front of our apartments and I get out and the, the UPS guy is actually putting stuff into our refrigerated section there. And I was like, hey, I got a little message from ButcherBox that my thing delivered. He's like, what's your name? And I tell him and he hands me the box. And the box is, I mean, it's like this wide and whatever. And it's not light. It's probably, let's see, um, three, six, nine, 12. It's probably like 20 pounds, okay, this box. So I get it from him. And I put it up on my shoulder so I can go to the Jeep and, and put it into the Jeep. And as I'm walking with the box, I'm holding it on my shoulder. This guy walks by, he's like, I just have to say, that's pretty damn impressive that you can carry it like that. And I was like, thanks. I felt like you know a construction worker because that's how I learned to do it. Learned to carry five gallon buckets on my shoulder. Learned to carry all kinds of stuff up here because it's easier than trying to carry here, especially against boobs and you know with your back or whatever. And then it leaves you a free hand. So I've learned to carry stuff on my shoulder. And I just thought it was really cool that he said that. Anyway, so then the man and the kid come down and help me bring everything up. We get upstairs. And then 
Y'all should have seen this place. I had bags everywhere from Walmart and the butcher box stuff. And then I had to take everything out of my refrigerator to fit everything in there that I got for, cause our family's gonna be here for an entire week. So I had to fit everything in there. And by the time that was done, I was like, I don't even know what to do with myself. So that's where we're at. Okay, that's what I did today. I wanna show you all this stuff too, but I also wanna tell you what happened. So what do I do, show you all this stuff or tell you what happened? Mm, I'll tell you what happened first. No, I'm gonna do the stuff first. I'm gonna show you the stuff first because, oh shit, side note, I need to put this in water. So I got these um, sockeye, uh, Alaska sockeye salmon, it's wild caught. I got these from Butcher Box. Oh, I just realized it has their name on it, from Butcher Box. I realized I didn't have anything to cook for dinner and when I got home and was putting everything up, um, I saw this in there and I was like, I guess we can make this. Now I'm not gonna lie, I don't think I have ever had Alaska sockeye salmon before. It's the red kind and I don't know what it's gonna taste like because it's not the, it's not the Ala just regular Alaskan salmon, right? Sockeye is different. Yeah, sockeye is different. But I'm trying to like fast defrost this and I, I forgot I'm supposed to like put these little things. Oh, oh, it has the skin on too. I didn't know that. That'll be fun. I'm supposed to put these in water for 30 minutes to do a fast defrost or a fast thaw. And then every 30 minutes, switch out the water. And then, um, let's see, immerse sealed bag in a bowl of place fillets in a resealable bag. Oh, remove all packaging. Wait, so remove this and put it in a resealable bag. Immerse the sealed bag in a bowl of cold tap water. Change the water every 30 minutes so it continues to thaw. Once thawed, cook and consume immediately. <laughs> immediately, that's what it says. So wait, remove all packaging. So take it out of this, put it in a different bag, then put it in water. All right, we're gonna do that in a minute. Let's, let's get back to what we're doing. Um, so we'll do that for dinner. But I wanted to do these because I got two, two um, gifts here that I picked as I knock salmon into my sink. I got two gifts here that I picked up from UPS and I don't know what they are. I don't know what is in here. I feel like I'm supposed to know what's in here. This I'm pretty sure is from Jamie and I, she said that I should know what it is. She sent me an email, which I forgot to reply, Jamie, sorry. She sent me an email. It's normally books, but it doesn't feel like books. But if you guys saw the last video I put up, it was about uh, curling irons and my lack of knowing how to be feminine with curling irons. Side note, I returned the Lang, the, the flat iron that you can curl, I returned that one today. I decided to keep the bed head, the wand, because when I let my hair just regular air dry, it's got these weird waves anyway. It's so much easier to let it air dry and then use that wand to kind of like, this is me doing the, um, the spiral on the thing, not the Arsenio Hall thing, right? Um, I figured I'll keep that and try that. but. I feel like these are gonna be curlers. And I don't know, because it doesn't feel like books. So I'm gonna open this one first. From Jamie, from Amazon. I wonder if I'm right. I feel like I might be right. Satin wrapped flexi rods. <gasps> Disney princess, wait, what is this? OMG, OMG. Okay, hold on, wait, she got four of them? They're four of the same thing, right? Flexi rods, Disney princess. Jamie, I love you. This is so cool. Okay, because I wanted to try these and I haven't yet. Okay, here's a gift for you. Michelle, try using your wave spray or curl cream on damp hair, wrap sections around two of these at a time, leave in overnight, spray with hairspray as you take them out. All the best from Jamie. Okay, hold on. Let's see what one of these looks like. This is so much fun. Jamie, thank you so much. Oh, there's tape. Hold on, there's more tape. I don't want to rip break the box. Don't break box. Okay, what are... That's what I thought these were. Look, look how cute. <gasps> they are princesses. Holy jolly. Look, look, look. It's Ariel and, and Cinderella and Belle and Tiana and Moana. No, sorry, Pocahontas. I know what I'm doing. And who else? Well, there's two Ariels. That's interesting. You're both Ariel, right? Uh, Ariel as a fish and Ariel as a non-fish. Can y'all see that at all? Can you see that that, I think that one's Belle, and then you've got, who's down there? What's happening? That's Ariel down there, and then you've got, I wonder if there's like more on different ones, or are they all the same? They're all the same? No, they're different, because then there's Sleeping Beauty on this one. There's Tiana, okay. There's, is that Merida? I'm pretty sure that's Merida from Brave. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's her. And then, 
Who else? This looks like, this looks like Moana, but I don't know if I'm right or wrong. It's hard to tell, but I think that's Moana. This is the coolest thing ever. Jamie, thank you so much. I'm totally gonna try these. My hair is dirty as hell. That's why it's in a bun with the sunglasses covering up how dirty it is. So I'm gonna try these out tonight. I'm gonna take a shower. Am I, am I lying? Am I, gonna am I gonna do it tonight or tomorrow? I think I'm lying. I think I'm gonna do it tomorrow. <laughs> I'm so tired. I'm probably gonna do it tomorrow night. So I'm gonna have dirty hair because we're going to the gym in the morning. I don't wanna, and then it'd be pretty and then it gets all sweaty gross. So I'm gonna keep one more day of dirty hair. I'll be scratching the shit out of my head tonight. Um, so I'm gonna do this for the gym. And then afterwards, I, I'll just wear these things around the house all day tomorrow. What? I don't care. I'll wear them around the house all day while I do the rest of my chores before uh, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law get here. I'm gonna put my hair up in these little curler things. Maybe we'll do a live stream and y'all can watch me walking around like I'm from Mama's Family. Remember that show? Love that show. With Carol Burnett and what is the name of the lady who plays Mama? Oh, what is her name? It's literally like right here. Come on. Ah, oh, I can't do it. I can picture her face outside of the whole get up and I can't think of her name. God, y'all, y'all will know. Somebody tell me in the comments cause y'all will know. All right, but maybe I'll randomly think of it. How do I open this box? Why is this box like this? Hold on, I'm trying, to, oh. So I'm trying to open up this thing. Let me see, I can't, what is this? Open. Hold on, please hold. And then, I don't know what this is. Oh, I do know what this is. My dumbass ordered this. Come on, y'all. It, look, it's one of those days. I ordered this. It's a magnetic screen door because we have the door that goes, it's a, what is this called? Magzo or whatever. My neighbor downstairs, I noticed that she had a screen on her door that leads out to the balcony and her dog was just going in and out. But when he would go out, it would like snap close behind him and then he could easily come back in. It would snap close behind him. I'm like, um, Victoria, what is that? And so she sent me a link to it. And when I went to go get it on Amazon the first time, it was out of, um, out of stock. I'm, I'm trying to open this thing. Open. It was out of stock, so I couldn't get it, but it finally came back in stock. And this is what it is. So we had to measure it and make sure it's the right thing, but it's magnetic. So you can hold it back this way. And if you let it go, it literally just magnet clips right there because, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all know we have a golden doodle. Some of you don't, we have a golden doodle and he likes to go in and out. Um, and the set, but the second I close the door, he forgets he wants to be outside and he just wants to sit at the door and look at me like I have wounded him and broken his heart by closing the door. So this will hopefully make it so he will stay and be happy because he can see that he can get in and out how he wants. So I'm going to put this up later. I'm super excited. This thing is heavy. I'm not going to lie. I don't know how much this thing weighs. Of course it's made in China, but it is very heavy, but hopefully it will work well. I saw it downstairs and it seemed to work great. So I'm very excited about that. Now, this here is a $15 puzzle that my child had to have. She wanted it so badly for her birthday three years ago, so badly. I don't know if you can tell from the shine on this or not, but it's still um, plastic wrapped. She wanted it so badly that she never fucking touched it. So anybody who would like a Harry Potter thousand piece puzzle, you can email me and I will send it to you, but, but, you have to swear you will put it together and then send me a picture of it once it's all said and done. So if anybody wants a Harry Potter um, puzzle, you can either DM over on Patreon, send me an email, whatever else. I'm gonna do one of those, swirl them all together, name and a hat, kind of pull out, whatever. And then I'll, I'll, I'll send it to somebody. I'll pay shipping and handling. You don't have to worry about it. But I want it to go to somebody who loves Harry Potter or has somebody in their family who does and also likes puzzles and will put it together because this looks really cool and I wanna see it. So somebody put it together and send me a picture of it. If you promise to do it, it is yours for free, 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 free. Okay, so that's that. Last but not least, bunch of liquor <laughs> because the family's coming into town. And like I said, I've been counting calories and paying attention to stuff, but I am gonna have, where is it? A little bit of the uh, peach wine, not a lot. There's a lot of sugar and then those give me headaches. There is a massive, I don't ever know where I'm pointing at. There's a massive thing of tequila because price-wise, y'all, 
Work smarter, not harder. We could have got two small bottles for um, $2 cheaper, but it's also way less liquor. This is $2 more and way more liquor. I was like, mm, just go ahead and get the big bottle there. So we did that same thing with the bullet. I'm not drinking that shit. I don't like it. That's for the man and Tiano, but the tequila, my brother-in-law and Kevin will have the wine. My sister-in-law and I will have, sometimes we'll have tequila. It just depends. we got some Malibu hanging out, but for the next uh, Friday to the next Friday, we're going to pretend like we're on a family vacation. We're going to hit the beach. We're going to hit the pool. We're going to have some drinks. We're going to eat some food. Now I did go get a lot of good stuff, but we will still go out to breakfast. We'll go to two birds. We'll go to crackings. We will go to dinner at Dewey's. We will go get some pizza at Merlin's. We'll do Beauchamp's. We'll do like all these different places that we love here. Right. And we'll just chill and hang out. And I'm really excited and looking forward to it. Now, let me tell you what happened. <laughs> Y'all, let me tell you what happened. I don't understand why people are stupid. And I, I say that as nice as humanly possible. Like, how did you get a driver's license kind of stupid? Like, I need to understand this. And it's things like what I, I witnessed today twice, two times, two totally different cars, two times. I witnessed twice and my brain goes, your child's never gonna drive. Because, because if, if what happened today impacted my child, I would have to willingly murder somebody and just sit and rot my ass in jail and be perfectly fine with it. So here's what happened. Three lanes on this side of, we live off uh, 98, Highway 98. It's this long highway in Okaloosa all the way down to Walton County, like Panama City Beach from like and farther, all the way into Pensacola, Nav like Navarre, Pensacola. It's long highway, right? It's three lanes this way, three lanes that way. Mm -hmm. I feel like, again, a Beyonce song. Anyway, Three lanes, three lanes, speed limit's 45. There's a lot of turn lanes in the center, a lot of stuff on this side, a lot of stuff on this side. I'm in my Jeep on the right-hand side. Car next to me puts on its right turn signal and starts to pull over. And I'm like, huh, hi, I'm right here. You will knock me off the road. So I let my foot off the gas and I slow down. Then they realize that no, the right isn't what they wanted. They actually wanted into the left lane because they want to go to the Walmart that's right there. So instead of realizing that they're almost too, that, that, that there's no way for them to get into this turn lane, that they're just gonna have to go down and do a U-turn, they stop in the middle of fucking traffic, in the middle lane, they stop. The car behind them had like, I mean, this car slammed on its brakes to stop, put on its turn signal, so at least there's that, to get into the left lane, to get into the turn lane, to go to the Walmart. The car behind them, you could see them have to lock up their brakes and swerve which meant every single person behind them is doing the same thing. All you could hear was brakes and tires and everything else. And my first thought was that effing moron because they think they can just stop in the middle of a six lane freeway uh, on a 45 mile an hour, which you know everybody's doing 50 to 55 because they didn't wanna be inconvenienced to just go down and do a U-turn. They could have killed so many people behind them. It's, I don't understand the sheer stupidity of people. Okay, so we see that and I'm like, these, no. Because if my 16 year old, she's not 16 yet, but 16 year old had been behind, they may have freaked out. This could have been a never happened to them before situation and they wouldn't have known what to do. What if that car had stopped and the person behind them swerved around and then another person coming up has no clue, slams into the back of that car. There are so many things that could happen. Please, if you, and I love all of y'all immensely, you know this, but if you are the type of person that will stop in the middle of the road to get over a lane, please give your driver's license back to whatever state you're from and give your car away because you have no business driving at all whatsoever. So there's that one. Then we get maybe a half a mile down the road, <laughs> still three lanes, but now you have two turn lanes to go this way. Look, I spit two turn lanes to go this way. And this one car in the third lane really wanted to get into that turn lane. So they just stopped in the third lane. I don't know if you guys know this, but it goes slow, a little less slow, fast as hell. That's how lanes go. Slow, a little less slow, fast as hell. Break all the laws eh, on the laws. Ooh, no, I'm afraid to go to speed limit. Like that's how this works. So in fast as hell lane, dude just stops and puts on his turn signal next to the turn lane that's fully packed of people. And now he has to hope that once that light turns green, somebody will let him over. <laughs> of course, if he does not die first because he stopped Again, in the middle of a six lane freeway that's supposed to go 45 miles an hour because he was too lazy and lame and dumb to just go a little farther and do a fucking U-turn. I don't understand people like that. Do you have no concept of, you know, common sense? Like, why are you that stupid? Why do people ride with you? Both these cars had passengers. Both these cars had passengers. These people 
thought that they were gonna get in a car with this driver and everything was gonna be fine, not realizing that the person driving this car is fucking stupid. Like, oh my God, that is all, that is all. That's all I could think. And my brain is going, my kid is never gonna drive. She's never allowed to ride with anybody else. People suck. Like, that's all I could think. Ab absolutely no idea why people do this. It would never occur to me, ever. Ever. I don't even care what I've missed or what's right there. It would never occur to me to just stop in the middle of the road and hold up all traffic, possibly, you know, s cause some sort of collision or whatever else, just because, oh, that's my turn. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yo, people do that. I don't understand. Do you also forget how to wipe your butt? Like, do you take a shit and then just pull up your pants when you're done? Because if you're stupid enough to stop in the middle of the road, you're dumb enough to crap yourself and then walk away without wiping. Like, that's all I can think. People are walking around with some stinky booty holes and stopping in the middle of traffic. They are synonymous. They are the same person. If your booty hole stinks, you probably stop in traffic. That's that. So, that's what I wanted to tell you. Did all that to get to that. So, that's it. All right, now I'm going to depackage my salmon salmon because some people pronounce the l salmon and put it into some stuff so it can defrost so hopefully i can cook it before eight o'clock tonight because i'm hungry and i'm supposed to not eat after eight so we got to figure this out that's that all right squirrel tribe 2.0 i love you immensely thanks for hanging out i'll see you probably tomorrow maybe friday what whichever day it is we're gonna have some curlers in my head so it's gonna be fun be prepared Okay, that's all. Love you. Bye.